your attendance um, and, and appreciate your uh, input as well. We are going to talk about the transit development plan that we've been working on uh, for VOTRAN for the last eight months. Um, yeah, eight months. And um, a lot has happened in those eight months, and we're going to show you some of the uh, interesting things that um, our consultant, Tyndall Oliver, has put together uh, from public workshops that we've had, uh, from uh, public surveys, um, stakeholder interviews, um, data that they've collected from um, uh, Botran. Oh, sorry, I probably should have told you. My name is Bobby King. I'm the Operations Manager for Community Services. And so today we have Tyndall Oliver with us. Um, we have uh, Votran staff with us, of course, and I uh, want to uh, thank our community information um, department for helping us put together uh, tonight's program. So how we're going to do this tonight is um, we're going to show a pre-recorded uh, presentation. It'll take about 10 or 15 minutes. And um, when that's complete, we'll ask for questions or comments, um, and then we're going to go around the room and take a look at some of these boards and get some information from um, uh, from those and if anybody has additional questions. Uh, sorry for the people online. We're going to try to video uh, the portion of the um, uh, going around the room for you as well. Uh, but if you have any additional questions during that time, we'll certainly take your, your questions. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Hello everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining us for this public workshop. My name is Joel Ray and I'm part of the project team putting together VOTRAN's Transit Development Plan, also known as a TDP. Before I proceed with the presentation about VOTRAN's TDP and its related recommendations for transit in Volusia County, let's go over what we will be covering today. We'll be looking at what a TDP is, the steps taken to complete the VOTRAN TDP, Results from the first phase of public involvement, where we have heard a great deal about the mobility needs of the community. The process for developing the TDP recommendations. And finally, a list of short and midterm transit service recommendations. After, we will discuss what is left to finish up the TDP process. Let's first look at what a TDP is and also what it is not. A TDP is a 10-year plan that lays out a strategic vision for the future of a transit agency. It evaluates existing conditions in a community, both in terms of growth and demographics, as well as current transit services. Then it identifies current and future needs for enhanced transit mobility, regardless of whether there is current funding for them. Finally, the TDP compiles a logical phase plan for bridging the gap between today's services and tomorrow's needs a plan that ultimately does acknowledge the current and future fiscal realities in the community for such transit improvements so that it includes both funded and unfunded priorities. In addition, it is especially important for transit agencies in Florida, like VOTRAN, to complete a major update of the TDP. It is required every five years by the Florida Department of Transportation, and it also is a required element for these agencies to receive funding from the state. This specific source of revenue is known as block grant funding. From a local policy perspective, it also is helpful to understand that while a TDP outlines how a transit agency may desire to grow and evolve over time, it is not a binding agreement like a budget. Because of this, during interim years between the major updates, annual progress reports are prepared by agencies to show how they are doing over time with their implementation processes. If changes in local conditions necessitate changes in the vision plan, these are addressed in the annual updates as well. Now, let's talk about the journey to prepare a TDP for VOTRAN in Volusia County and how we got where we are today. VOTRAN followed a methodical process as well as Florida Department of Transportation guidelines to develop its TDP. The agency did this to ensure the process results in a better plan that will benefit you, the community it serves. As part of the process, VOTRAN's project team developed a number of technical reports that were reviewed by an advisory committee made up of local, regional, and state participants. Additionally, a very important aspect of this process is public involvement. 
which was accommodated early in the process and is going on again at this time. So we really appreciate you joining us today. At the same time that this TDP is being prepared, VOTRAN also is conducting a comprehensive operational analysis of its fixed route bus services, which is also known as a COA. The primary goal of the COA is to enhance the efficiency of VOTRAN's fixed route bus services so that its current resources are utilized effectively in meeting the transit needs of the community. The analysis process is designed to examine and evaluate the system to determine where improvements can be made to make transit operations more effective and efficient across the network while still ensuring the ability of the system to serve existing riders. Ultimately, the COA is trying to ensure that VOTRAN gets the best bang for its buck. The main purpose of completing the COA concurrently with the TDP is to enable any proposed changes to routes and the network to be included in the TDP as the quote unquote new base network for the initial years of the plan. This base network then becomes the starting point for the TDP to determine the appropriate mobility solutions, capital improvements, and technologies needed in Volusia County over the next 10 years. Every planning process works best when it involves the members and stakeholders of the community to ensure that the process recognizes needs from their perspective. This is why public involvement efforts are so important to the TDP process. They provide an opportunity for critical input and feedback and are key to establishing the basis for identifying and understanding transit needs in a community. Effective outreach can help gather information to ascertain community perceptions and expectations about local and regional transit services, as well as collect reactions about plan improvements to those services. As mentioned before and shown here, we already have completed some of the planned outreach activities for VOTRANS TDP including interviews with key stakeholders and discussion groups. We also have completed some public workshops and surveys, and I'll show you some of those results momentarily. All the activities shown here were conducted as part of the first phase of public outreach for the TDP effort. Through the first phase of public involvement, we have had nearly 3,500 people participate and give us input. Of the 3,484 total participants involved in the first phase of public input, 24 stakeholders were engaged via interviews, 45 VOTRAN staff and bus operators were involved through meetings and interviews, 1,696 bus riders and non-riders participated in the onboard survey and or online general public survey. 44 selected participants provided input during the facilitation of four discussion group workshops, 150 people were involved through grassroots outreach, 31 people participated in the first phase of public workshops, and 1,494 were engaged through the use of email, web, and social media outlets. Currently, we are holding two additional public workshops, one of which you are participating in right now. In addition, we also have started another online survey and will provide you with information on it later on. I'm now going to share a brief overview of some of the outreach results we have compiled thus far from the many activities that have been completed. For example, we completed a bus onboard survey of all VOTRAN routes in January of 2021 to help us understand more about current VOTRAN riders, their travel behavior, and their needs. Here, we show some general characteristics of riders that took the onboard survey. As you can see, most riders, 54%, are over the age of 45. Approximately 48% of riders identify themselves as being black and or Hispanic. Over half, 51%, have an annual household income of $20,000 or less. The majority, 59%, use VOTRAN services five to seven days per week. This high frequency of use shows that VOTRAN is an integral part of the community and that current riders depend on it. The bus onboard survey also asked riders to select the top three improvements that they would like to see VOTRAN implement to improve their experience. This is an important question for rider survey since current riders are most familiar with the system and, therefore, are in an excellent position to offer input on what elements they feel need to improve the most. As shown, more weekend service was the most popular choice and was selected by approximately 53.2% of respondents. The second most needed improvement 
was more early and or later service with approximately 52.7% expressing this need for existing routes. More frequent service on existing routes was the third most popular choice and was selected by 41.6% of respondents. Please note that since respondents were able to select multiple responses, the distributions for all of the selected improvements total more than 100%. Besides the onboard survey of riders, the project team also conducted a general public survey from November 2020 to March 2021 to help better understand what Volusia County residents would like to see for enhancing transit services. Primarily in response to the pandemic situation, this other survey was offered only online. It also included a wide range of questions so that both current riders and non-riders could respond and offer input. In the survey, a similar question about needed transit improvements was included. When asked about their top priorities for the next 10 years, more frequent bus service was the most important improvement that respondents would like to see VOTRAN focus on. The next most indicated priority was more weekend service, followed by more early and later service. It is interesting to note that the same priorities were consistent between the general public and current riders. This suggests that expanding service hours and adding frequency may not only improve the quality of service for current riders, but it also may help attract more potential riders to VOTRAN bus service. Throughout all of the various outreach activities completed to date, several improvement priorities rose to the top. This table shows a snapshot of these improvement priorities with how they were ranked within each public input activity. Based on all the activities completed so far for the TDP effort, increased frequency was considered the top priority in all forums for Volusia County riders and non-riders for the next 10 years. More weekend service was mostly the second priority, signifying a need for more service supply on Saturdays and Sundays. Express and regional services were mostly the third priority, indicating a need to connect quickly with key points within and outside of the county. And extended span of service, that is either earlier or later service, was generally considered the fourth most important improvement need going forward, again indicating a need for more service supply. With the direction from the community, as we just showed in the outreach results, and various data and demand analysis efforts, VOTRAIN has identified a number of service and capital needs to serve its community in the next 10 years. But first, let's take a look at the two-phase analysis process that was used to guide the development of the potential improvements that VOTRAN may implement. As previously mentioned, a COA is an analysis of an existing transit network that is used as a tool to improve operations in the short term. This short-term analysis also utilized input from riders, staff, and stakeholders as shown in the previous slides. However, the process is primarily data-driven, so it focused on using route-level characteristics such as on-time performance, peak passenger load levels, operating costs, and bus stop level passenger boarding data. The midterm analysis then builds on that base network and develops a more robust vision to improve VOTRAN beyond just the COA efficiency improvements in the next few years. To help support this process, significant analysis was done to understand the local operating environment, including examination of current and future population and employment densities, and assessment of the propensity for use of transit by various demographic segments, such as low income and older adult populations. We then used the combination of analytical results and public engagement input to identify key mobility needs and develop logical alternatives to meet them. The result of the whole process is a TDP midterm network that builds off the initial COA network while also incorporating improvements such as the enhancements of routes with the highest ridership and forward thinking technology based options that will make VOTRAN a viable transit option for all in the future. This slide briefly summarizes the key objectives of the VOTRAN TDP's two phased approach. The short term period, which encompasses the first three years of the plan, focuses on service efficiency and connections and is based on recommendations derived from the COA. Typically, COA improvements would cover a one to two year period at most, but due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and the funding and or lifestyle uncertainties that may result from it, the timeline for short-term implementation was adjusted to one to three years. 
This adjustment allows VOTRAN additional time to implement any of the related recommendations if there are any funding delays associated with these projects or the quote unquote new normal ends up warranting more preparation time prior to implementation. Then, in the midterm period, which involves years four through 10 of the plan, the focus will be on building onto the short term network in a logical fashion to further enhance VOTRAN services so that over the next decade, it will become an enhanced, connected, technology-based system that is able to meet the needs of current riders while also attracting new discretionary users from throughout the county. I'm going to now have Carl Weckenman from our project team walk you through the TDP's proposed short-term needs resulting from the COA work. Thank you, Joel. As part of the Comprehensive Operational Analysis, or COA, part of this project, we have been asked to evaluate the entire VOTRAN bus network and make recommendations designed to improve mobility for customers while also reducing costs where possible. We looked at each route segment by segment and trip by trip as part of this analysis. While we do recommend changes on most routes, it is important to note there are many positive aspects of the current service which we attempt to preserve. The reliability of the service in terms of on-time performance is outstanding. In the six months of data we reviewed, nearly 90% of trips were made on time. The schedules themselves follow regular intervals, making it much simpler to remember when the next bus is coming. Connections between routes have regular pulses, which reduces transfer time for customers who must make a connection. Finally, the service levels on the routes generally match service demand. So the number of modifications to route frequencies with our proposal is smaller than usual for these types of projects. The changes we do recommend are several. Some of existing routes have been realigned. Currently, they may follow more circuitous paths, which means longer trip times for customers and also increases costs. Our recommendations remove many of the service deviations that make these routes indirect. And in some cases, we have moved a location from one route to another to achieve the same result. Our proposal does call for the removal of service from some areas where ridership is lowest. Finally, we would recommend additional service reach on evenings and Sundays, both periods when VOTRAN service prefer, performs well. The proposal calls for 10 routes with longer hours during the week and five routes, which currently do not run on Sunday, to begin doing so. It's important to note that many of the workers who depend on VOTRAN are in industries where work shifts frequently fall outside traditional work hours. Finally, for areas where bus service has been less successful, the long-term plan identifies mobility on demand areas to expand more flexible services in areas where most appropriate. Some of the important changes in East Volusia County are the realignment of several routes, such as routes 105 and route 119, to serve as crosstown routes, routes that would no longer serve the transfer plaza. There's improved service frequency to every 30 minutes in the proposal along Granada Boulevard. The proposal does not recommend maintaining service on some lesser used street segments such as Hand Road and areas north of Granada Boulevard within Ormond Beach. The proposal recommends combining routes 1 and 18, as well as routes 12 and 15 to improve costs. Within the southeast part of Volusia County, the plan proposes improved frequency of service to every 30 minutes along Dunlawton Avenue. 
and expanding nights and Sunday service farther west to Interstate 95 in the Port Orange area. Routes have been reconfigured near Swallowtail Transit Hub to improve service directness. Finally, existing fixed routes along current Route 44 and the service along Route 17 to Ponce Inlet are proposed to be discontinued due to lower ridership. Flex zones in New Smyrna Beach are proposed to be modified to allow for this service to stretch to the New Smyrna Beach Walmart. For Western Volusia County, our proposed network attempts to better integrate SunRail feeder service into the rest of the network to reduce service overlaps. The current Route 33, or proposed Route 133, is recommended to operate midday service within DeBerry, Orange City, and Deltona. <clears throat> Former loop routes 21, 22, and 23 are proposed to be altered to two-way service along routes 122 and route 133. The service frequency along current route 20 is recommended to be reduced to once per hour given the current ridership levels. Finally, Route 160 is proposed to be extended farther into DeLand to the DeLand Intermodal Transit Facility. In summary, the proposal would leave most daytime route frequencies the same, focusing most improvements on night and Sunday service. The net annual operating cost of the changes within the proposal are estimated to save about 470,000 on fixed route costs and a similar amount among ADA paratransit costs. Thank you for, for your attention and I will now turn the presentation back to Joel for additional details on the transit development plan update. Thank you so much, Carl. So let's now look at the four to 10 year plan which we call the midterm network, and again, builds on the new short-term network. Before introducing the individual alternative improvements, let me first present how the needs for the two distinct areas of the county were derived. On the east side of Volusia County, the midterm focused on more north-south services, faster connection to the west, quick downtown to beach links, commuter express on I-4, connection to Flagler County, and more service in Ormond Beach. On the west side of the county, there is a focus on more service into land, faster connections to East Volusia, a more efficient hybrid service model in Deltona, and connections to the planned to land Sunrail station. In the next few slides, we will look at more specific details about the alternative improvements that could modify and enhance the current network in each area. Let's first start on the east side of the county and review the individual midterm alternative improvements that could enhance VOTRAN services in East Volusia. Increasing frequency on routes 103 and 104 would increase the service frequency primarily on US-1. These will quickly connect residents and visitors to economic opportunities, shopping, and other activities acting as a north-south horizontal elevator on the corridor. They will also connect with other VOTRAN routes at the downtown transfer plaza extending its reach. The east-west rapid, an enhanced version of the current Route 60 on US-92, would provide a high frequency connection from DeLand to Daytona Beach. This higher frequency would be combined with technology upgrades such as transit signal priority and queue jumps to help buses meet their schedules on the busy US-92 corridor. We will discuss these technologies in more detail later. The downtown to beach connector would provide a quick connection from the Volusia Transfer Plaza to the beachside intermodal transit facility. The Daytona Deltona Commuter Express would run on I-4 just during peak hours to provide another east-west connection for the county. The Volusia Flagler Express would also be peak hour only service and provide a regional connection to the Palm Coast area. The I-95 west to beach connector would offer a new connection from west of I-95 to the Beachside Intermodal Transit Facility with a stop at the Tanger Outlets. 
The Ormond Beach Circulator would offer a local city connection from the mainland across the Halifax River to the beach. Finally, the Ponce Inlet Mobility on Demand service would provide point-to-point -point coverage in the Ponce Inlet area and could connect riders to a bus stop in Port Orange to reach the wider network. If there is enough demand to justify a traditional type service again in this area later in the next 10 years, a connector service could replace the mobility on demand service to link Ponce Inlet to the mainland in Port Orange. The midterm alternative improvements for West Volusia are designed to improve service and coverage in both Deltona and Deland. Key improvements consist of a circulator in Deland that would serve more areas in the downtown and surrounding neighborhoods in the north part of the city and connect the city to the proposed Deland Sunrail Station, an app based on demand transit service for the south side of the city which would offer point-to-point -point coverage to areas between New York Avenue and Taylor Road. A traditional on-demand hybrid service model also has been considered in Deltona in the midterm. In addition to continuing the realigned fixed route services as presented in the short-term plan, there also would be three new mobility on-demand zones introduced. As this area's density and scale may not warrant additional fixed route services, even in the next four to 10 years, on-demand microtransit type services would provide an efficient option to keep the community connected to VOTRAN in that area. With planned commercial growth in Orange City, a connector has been considered to serve this area. Lastly, a regional commuter service to Orlando also is a possible alternative enhancement. The Volusia Lynx Commuter Express would link commuters to the Lynx Central Station in Orlando, where they could connect to the Lynx bus network. However, this service is only for peak hours and can only happen with regional coordination and consensus and as a service that complements SunRail. Here are the details for the additional services noted throughout the midterm network maps. They would provide quick connections throughout Volusia County and the region. Enhancing routes 103 and 104 would improve service frequency on US-1 to every 15 minutes down from 30 minutes. The east-west rapid would replace route 60 increasing frequency from 30 minutes to every 15 minutes. The Daytona Beach connector would run every 15 minutes. The North Deland Circulator, Orange City Connector, I-95 West to Beach Connector, Ponce Inlet to Port Orange Connector, and Ormond Beach Circulator would serve their respective areas every 60 minutes. The Daytona to Deltona Commuter Express would add another connection from the east to the west part of the county during peak morning and afternoon hours. The Volusia Flagler Express would also operate during peak morning and afternoon hours to connect to and from Flagler County. And finally, the Volusia Links Commuter Express would connect Volusia County and Orlando during peak commuting hours in the morning and afternoon. Let's now look at the possible 2031 network that could result from implementation of the alternative improvements we've discussed in a different way, by frequency. This map shows the potential 2031 VOTRAN network by frequency if all of the improvements to meet needs are implemented in the next 10 years. As shown, the 2031 network would provide frequent connections on US-1 and US-92, acting as a sort of express elevator along those corridors while also providing quick connection to the proposed Deland Sunrail Station. Implementing technology-based mobility on demand zones in lower density areas also would help expand local connections. Mobility on demand, also known as MOD services, is a technology-based on-request service that uses a phone app or call-in service for scheduling trips. The service connects point to point within a defined service zone and typically is provided with non-bus-like vehicles or vans. In the West, South Deland and three key areas in Deltona would implement this type of service. Though some parts of these areas would lose fixed route bus service with the COA updated short term network, MOD would fill in most of these gaps. In the east, the two existing flex zones in New Smyrna Beach would be converted to MOD zones. Additionally, Ponce Inlet also is identified as an area that has demand for MOD services initially. This service would complement Votrans fixed route bus services. With MOD, connections could be made to any destination within the zone or to nearby VOTRAN bus stops for connecting to routes that travel beyond the zone. To support the implementation of many of the alternative improvements discussed for transit services in Volusia County, there also should be a corresponding investment in capital infrastructure. To this end, two new park and rides, 
one in the east and one in the west, are proposed to support local and regional connections. Improving bus stop infrastructure and accessibility is needed to ensure that riders can get access to and use VOTRAN facilities safely and conveniently. Replacing retired diesel vehicles with electric vehicles is another improvement VOTRAN should consider in the next 10 years. This potential change in vehicle propulsion may assist with fuel costs and can also attract discretionary riders that are environmentally conscious. Implementing autonomous vehicles also is a potential concept to consider in the future, especially for the downtown to beach connection, as this also may help improve the attractiveness of transit and convince discretionary riders to use it. We mentioned transit signal priority previously. This application utilizes vehicle location and wireless communication technologies to extend the green phase or shorten the red phase of a traffic signal to allow buses to reduce their delay at intersections. This can help reduce overall travel times and ensure on-time arrivals, especially if the route is on a congested road with many busy intersections. When combined with transit signal priority, Q-jump lanes at intersections, which are usually implemented with right turn lanes, provide buses a head start over other queued vehicles, letting buses merge into the regular travel lanes immediately beyond the signal. These two new services would support the potential east-west rapid service on US-92 to make that connection fast and efficient. To help keep on-time performance high and improve the experience for existing riders, enhanced fare payment technologies also should be considered for implementation. This would expand options for fare payment and may also help facilitate fare compatibility with regional partners such as Lynx and Sunrail. As for the next steps of this TDP, our primary goal is to get your feedback so we can better understand your preferences regarding the various alternative improvements we've discussed today. I will tell you on the next slide how you can do that. Then we will finalize and prioritize these alternative strategies using your input to the 10-year needs evaluation. Looking at the future fiscal outlook for transit in the community, we next will prepare a TDP implementation plan with final recommendations from the list of strategies, a plan that will be financially feasible. We also will identify a list of projects for which there may not be any funding identified at this time. This list will be important in helping Volusia County and the Florida Department of Transportation just in case some federal, state, or even local funds becomes available in the future so they will know how best to spend that. Finally. The current project schedule calls for the TDP to be adopted in the July-August timeframe so that the final TDP will be ready for submittal to the Florida Department of Transportation by September 1st. So, how can you help to make transit a better and more practical option for commuting and getting around Volusia County? Well, please take the online survey. The link to the survey is listed on this slide and is available on the VOTRAN website as well. You also may access it by scanning the QR code included on the slide. If you have additional input or comments, please feel free to provide those to us by using the comment box at the end of the survey. Finally, if you need any additional information, please email the Volusia County Project Manager, Bobby King. Her email is shown on this slide as well. We sincerely appreciate you taking time to view this presentation about the TDP and helping VOTRAN plan for the future. We thank you. Um, 
see everything uh, well and hear everything well. Um, and there's a lot of information that was presented tonight. <laughs> Some may be very confusing. So I wanted to just make a few points before we moved on. Um, the presentation you saw tonight, um, again, is multiple phases, short-term, mid-term, long-term. This is a 10-year plan. Um, so as you can imagine, we can't just do all of it at one time. Um, the recommendations are set out so that we could do a few things in the beginning as um, uh, uh, funding is available and, and uh, those kinds of important things. And, but there's a lot that can be done in the next 10 years um, if, if everything went well. Um, so we're presenting all of that to you um, tonight, and it's a lot to take in. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out was um, when uh, Mr. Carl here was speaking about the COA, um, the routes that you're familiar with are numbered um, basically in singular or double numbers. The ones that he is presenting as a changed route, uh, was, was the best way to do that was add 100 to it. So I wanted to point out that um, so that everybody was like, well, we don't have a Route 103. Well, it's, it's 103 in this particular pl plan is to kind of show you how it could look. Um, so I'm sure we have questions um, and I would love to hear from you. Please feel free to come up to the microphone and ask any of us any questions you want. Um, Joel Ray is here. He's the one who did the presentation for us, the voice you heard the most. Carl uh, Weckenberg is here. I just, I know I just said his name wrong. Um, our general manager, Kelvin Miller, is also here, um, and many other Votran staff members that, uh, that could answer any question you uh, probably have. So let's have at it. I'm going to open it up to the public. Everybody jump up. So, um, Ann Ruby, 137 Park Avenue in Daytona Beach. Um, I have several questions. One, I moved to Daytona Beach because of Votran, and then I bought a car. So I have not ridden Votran in the past few years. One of the things I would have liked to have seen when I was riding it is tap on and off with credit cards. No more exact change. And I don't know if that's something that's already been implemented or if that's part of your plan. Um, is any has it been implemented? Are there plans to implement it? It it hasn't been implemented. We are in the process of looking at different type of mo mobile uh, fare payment issues, okay. uh, and somewhere probably in the next two three years, or maybe in the next year or so, we'll be looking at different modes of paying fare. Awesome. Um, okay, and then. I also really love the idea of expanded service, and especially the beachside downtown connector in Daytona Beach. Is that just going to go from the ITF to the transfer plaza, or will it run anywhere up and down the beach street side, or is that just a TB, all a TBD? Right. Okay. So that the other services can do what they're doing as far as basically just tapping into transfer service. It does not necessarily go anywhere else. Okay. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was on. Okay. Um, and then the other thing I am really passionate about is you used to have a green trolley that ran from Granada to Dunlawton and looped to the beach side. And I would really love to see that brought back every 15 minutes. And I know that's pie in the sky. But I'm just wondering if somebody, as I go around arguing for this, if somebody could get me what that would cost. Like, what is the cost to operate something like that every 15 minutes? How many vehicles does it take? Do you still have the green trolleys? So if somebody wants to find me later and talk to me about this, I would be grateful, if, or unless you want to address it right now. Sure, I want to leave that one to Votran. But okay. I do remember the trolley because we used to study that. Sure. Okay. Well, I can say that uh, we don't have the trolleys anymore, um, and we can look at the cost of what it would, would it, what it would cost us to run a trolley up and down Atlantic Avenue. Um, I, I don't know what the cost was previous, and I, and I don't know the arrangement 
I've only been here for a short period of time, so I don't know what the arrangement was, but I, if I remember correctly, I think it was a collaborative effort between Voltrain and some of the merchants okay. uh, in downtown, or in, in on the beach side. And that's what I would envision it would need to be. There would need to be some subsidies of it, but if it could get implemented again, I think it's a chicken and egg. You know, it, it got canceled because there were no ridership, but it didn't run frequently enough to have ridership and it didn't run long enough. It was just temporary. So I will find you. Yes, and we can get we can get those costs to you. All right. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. And I've been riding a boat train ever since it was a boat train. And I want to know why ain't no buses out on the south, on the mid side of Martin Luther King from George Ingram to Fairview. There's no buses. You don't have no buses out there. We, it, we, we never had no buses. And all down Orange Avenue, no buses. We had, never had no buses out there. Why we can't get no buses on that side of town? I think it's the current system. No, it's the buses. We don't have no buses out from Fairview to George Ingram. Sure. From, from uh, Martin Luther King. But you're talking about today, there's no buses currently. There's never been no buses. Right, that's what I'm asking. South about. Street, Key Street, no buses out there. Orange Avenue, no buses. That's what my concern, the buses. I know about the other routes. Yeah, that's probably something we can look at. Um, I, uh, be honest with you, I can't answer why there, there was no bus service there. Ain't there never been no it, bus service there, but we don't have no bus, no uh, benches to sit on. We don't have no benches. The benches is the problem. Oh, but most so, of the people that elders, they're not going to be able to stand up 30 minutes to wait on no bus. Yeah, we, we are in the process now. We're in the process now of looking at some bus stops, and it's one of the issues that we are uh, deeply into um, and trying to figure out ways to maybe enhance our, our amenities at our bus stops. If you look all the way down George Angle to Fairview, it's nothing. No buses. Look down uh, Martin Luther King, come down Martin Luther King, no buses. No nothing. If it rains, you have to stand out in the rain. Wait for the bus. I'm sitting about the uh, benches. Now, you're, you're, you're specifically talking about bus stops and benches I mean, and the shelters. Bus stops is there. Right. But we don't have no benches. Right. Okay. B E A C <laughs> benches. That's it, what I'm concerned about, no benches. It, it is something that we are actually looking at and, and trying to figure out best ways to uh, get uh, benches and shelters. And sometimes it's a, it's a municipality issue, uh, sometimes it's a county issue. But if um, you go all the way down Ridgewood and come on back to Port Orange, you got you got some benches. But we have nothing out and I was on the on that side. That's what I'm consistent of. Yes, ma'am. We'll we'll take that and, and get you some answers on that. Uh, some of those benches that you see may have been put up by Daytona Beach, the city of Daytona Beach. Uh, some of them may have been put up by Holly Hill. It just depends on the location. Uh, Voltran, Voltran itself, we only um, service bus stops that are in the in the actual unincorporated areas of Volusia County. Okay, cool. I've been riding the bus here since Bernal. I've been driving. Hi there. I am Heidi Heller of Holly Hill. I do have a car, but I like riding the buses every now and then because I want to go to to land for a Saturday at the museums or New Smyrna uh, for a time at the show or at the beach. So I want to stop using my car and make it more easy for me that I don't have to worry about my car. A lot of people don't have that luxury and need to uh, use the buses all the time. There's something that I haven't heard you all talk about, but you alluded to this is only Volusia County bus stops that you are in control of. So I don't know if you'd be in control of this thought I would like to see the some member involved in the BP, the Board of Planning and Appeals in each city and maybe go to the um, commission meeting and 
remind the people too, if you have a big business coming in with a couple acres, another tang or outlet or something, to have them create the bus stop there along with the, the bench and the uh, shelter. Um, I would like to see a member of the LUSA team be more involved in, in actual verbiage. I don't know what you do behind the scenes, but I don't hear you at the um, Holly Hill meetings. Um, that's, I think, maybe number one. As far as Holly Hill or the Volusia County, we're the world's most famous beach. So we have that reputation. So how about we get another reputation of encouraging people as in other countries, everyone rides a bus, whether you're poor, whether you're rich or disabled, no matter where you go, you get to ride the bus. And I think that was uh, in the back of our heads, we should think that we need to make it better looking. Buses do look fine, they're nice. If you had more bus stops, that would be nicer for other cultures. And you wanna develop, I understand, you wanna get more money, and but spend less. So therefore you wanna be less wasteful. You want more money, but your fee is so low right now. How can you get more money from those people? Changing hours, maybe, that's good. But how about getting different types of people also to use the bus? There's the short term, which we have for um, shows, Daytona One, or the beach, or concerts at the beach, or some show at the uh, center, the big center. Um, I, I would like to see a little bit more worldly um, um, participation. Therefore, we want to develop tours here. There's a lot of tours that come in. And I think that's a lot of notes, but nothing important. So, oh, so the last, he said, he said um, effective outreach about getting these meetings. So this is votetrans.org on the news info, news detail, the news and information link. It says, Votran holding public workshops for feedback, May 5th. Well, I'm sorry, maybe it was posted May 5th. I don't care about that. I wanna know the date. And I didn't see any notices on the library here until just today coming in, a little sign. So if you want effective, effective uh, outreach to get writers on, I think you also need to be more effective in your websites and your promotion to the public for it's actually a good place to write on. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, I appreciate your input and would love to make sure you do one of those surveys that we have. Thank you. Who else? Anyone else in the audience that wants to speak? We're going to open it up to the online folks here in a few minutes. So we just want to make sure I catch everybody here. Come on up to the mic. So I would also just like to stress the importance of possibly getting more benches and more shelters at bus stops because there's a lot of places where I'm coming from this from the perspective of a disabled person where there's a lot of places where there's honestly, if you have limited mobility, if you have issues like you use a, a sight cane and you have to like basically go out into a, this patch of grass that's by the road and find your place to stand right there, it's kind of, it, it's a really, uh, it's difficult to, to make that work if you have a disability, especially like this, the other speaker said, when there's like inclement weather, when it's raining, stuff like that. So I just wanna stress the importance of I don't know if it has to get done through Daytona Beach or if it has to get done through other municipalities, but just getting some improvements to the bus stops. Agreed. Come on up, sir. <laughs> Hello, my name is Jason Offenberg. I'm resident of Daytona Beach. Um, I really, one of the things I commented on in January was the increasing frequency. And so it's exciting to see working on that and making the routes straighter and more efficient. That's awesome. Will the slides be available so we can study them? 
I saw on the on the current survey you have that nice online map for the midterm changes. Mm -hmm. Is there a similar map for the COA one to three year map online? We've got a map for everything. Okay. Um, I didn't but, see a link for that. So. But I'll make sure that. Uh, okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah, and okay. staff can help you go through that too okay. uh, when we're finished. But I will definitely put that on the um, web page so that you can look at it as much as you want. Great, sure. Um, another plug for, of course, bus stops and shelters. It's hot and rainy in Florida. <laughs> um, uh, the other thing is that everyone arrives at the bus usually by walking or riding their bike. And so I just, I don't know if it can happen this TDP, but maybe the next one try to better integrate biking and walking plans with transit plans. So we know people can get to the, there's a sidewalk that actually goes to that bus stop. And there's been some tremendous improvements recently along Clyde Morris, where the bus stop used to be on a busy road with no shoulder in the grass. And now there's a sidewalk all along the west side of Clyde Morris from Bevel South. So this is a major improvement. So thank you. I don't know who, if Votran was involved in that, I don't know, but if you were, thank you very much. Um, so these things are very important, how, how to actually get to the bus. So Definitely. keep that in mind. It, uh, the, the transit experience is partly the biking and walking experience, because how you experience the whole system is how you get there in the first place. So just want to emphasize that. Thank you very much. Well, so you bring up a good point. The TPO, um, Transit uh, Planning Organization here in Volusia County, we work very, very closely with. Um, our, you know, we coincide the same missions in a lot of ways, and so they're probably um, uh, responsible for for that um, or some portion of their organization is so yeah, yeah I should say that I serve on the bicycle pedestrian advisory committee okay. as an alternate representing all of Lucia <laughs> County so I'm intimately familiar with I thought I heard, recognize your name <laughs> and of course we have TPO um, members here with us today yes. so thankfully thank you. come on up hello my name is Derek I'm about a week um, new resident of Daytona Beach. Just a quick question. Um, when new developments come to the area for all of Volusia County and particularly um, Daytona Beach, do you all communicate with the new developments about providing space for bus stops, um, benches, covers in the area? Because I know that's important if developers have new residents, they may want to get on Voltran. So do you all work with the local city government or with the developer to maybe say, you're a new developer in the area. Can we put a site, a bus stop? Would you partner with us for that? Does that take place? That's a good question. And, yeah. and it does. It does take place. Um, do you want to address it, John? Join me. Sure. <laughs> uh, yes, my name's John Cotton. I'm with Votran. I uh, manage the uh, bus stop database. Um, I do get plans in for new developments that filter through the county and from the cities. Uh, we do uh, ask that they um sorry i should have gotten up I'm, apologies uh we do um review the plans we do give suggestions for where bus stops should be located on the new properties um and, you know letting them know if a transit route does go past their property because i get asked that question a lot and so yes we do work at quite extensively has it been successful in regards to developers contributing funds to put a site in front or are they wanting the city or the um, county oh, no, usually it's, a, it's included in the in their construction okay. um in and to bury um there is a new apartment complex that's going in next to sunrail they built uh bus stops here in daytona beach uh the shopping center at tarragona they built uh the bus stop to the west right across the street from Day uh, daytona state not the one at the castle but the one right across from daytona state um we have uh the olive up in um orma beach which is an apartment complex okay. so yes there are uh several places uh the wawa on granada they put in a bus shelter as well All right. mm -hmm. i'll be using it a lot okay Thanks. anybody else in the audience Do we have any questions from our online online um, viewers? Someone may need to raise their hand, push the hand. 
Okay, everyone that's online, um, if you would like to ask a question, please raise your hand. Um, if you don't know how to do that, you can type in the chat um, that you want to ask a question, and we just need to unmute you. We'll give you some time. You saw a hand? Nancy Burgess Hall, you have um, raised your hand. I, let's go ahead and see if you can if you can speak with us being able to hear you. Would unmute your mic on your end if you would. Can you tell us she has? Okay. Miss Hall, if you could unmute yourself. Any way we can do it? Miss Hall, if you can hear me. If you don't have a microphone on your computer, you're more than welcome to type into the chat section or the questions section, whichever is easiest for you. Okay, I think she put in her question. I can't find the unmute. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what, Ms. Hall, that's okay. If you want to take a minute and type out your question, um, we'll go to somebody else in the audience and then we'll come back to your question. Okay, we're gonna try that. So anybody, we had a couple people come in a few minutes ago. Anybody want to speak from the public? Anybody? No, everybody spoke before you. Go ahead. Hop up to the microphone if you don't mind. Stephen must have used this microphone last. All right, my name is Big John. I live in South, South Holly Hill. And uh, I want to talk about my... Uh, Grievances. First of all, I want to know if um, if the consultants are here. Of, of course, they're here. They're right here. That's them. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want to get your cards when you when we're done. Um, so the problem is, why don't we have any bus stop benches, or we don't have very many? It's really embarrassing. It should be almost a scandal. So I'm trying to decide. Is there a problem with Votran and Port Kelvin sitting up there, a contractor who probably does what he's told? Or is it the administration of the county that tells Kelvin, bus stop benches aren't important? First of all, I hope the consultants think that bus stop benches are important because I've got a, a report here, bus stop 101 done by Votran that makes it like it's just a necessary evil and it's not important. The people that use bus stop, uh, the people that use the bus and therefore the bus stop bench are the old, the infirm, the frail, the weak, the poor, uh, people that nobody rides Votran unless they have to. What, what's, what's this whole bunch over here? What are they doing here? They're Votran staff. Oh, they're staff. Okay, good. All right. So, um, so we're not really. I don't. I'm not mad at the Votran staff, Kelvin. I'm not even mad at you. Okay, uh, because I think you're taking orders, and I think the orders have been that we're just going to forget about bus stops. So I got mad enough. First of all, we had a TPO meeting, 
where the consultant didn't show up to make the presentation on what I think is pretty important, the TDP, Transit Development Plan. That's what we're doing here. And, uh, and the, so I called Ms. King, who I was told was a very nice person. And um, it's not her fault when things go wrong. But she said it wasn't in the budget for them to attend TPO. See, the reason we don't have bus stop benches and the reason we have problems with Votran is because we don't have any plan whatsoever. Nobody's talking to nobody. So consultants, I hope you get that in your report uh, when you get around to re writing it. Uh, by the way, I did check consultants. You're being paid, according to the county, $475,000 for this TDP. Is that close? Close, okay. So for 475,000, I was thinking you should be able to be able to make a TPO meeting where we've got five county council members sitting there and we've got almost every city represented there. And that's where we're supposed to do the planning and get together and talk to each other and have communication. But we ain't got none of that. And that's, that's a sorry state of affairs. So I got uh, even madder before I decided it wasn't Kelvin's fault. And I asked, how many new bus stops have we got in the last 10 years? So we got 121 new bus stops in the last 10 years. And, and how many bus stops do we have? Uh, we're not sure. Actually, what, four, three or four years ago, I think you, you're Tyndall Oliver, aren't you? I think you were the same guys that did it the last time, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. So we don't ever seem to know how many bus stops. Now we think we got 2,600. It would seem to me that's a pretty easy number to figure out. How many bus stops have we got in Volusia County? Now the guesstimate is 2,600. Of the 2,600, only 350 have a bench. And only 45 have a shelter. Now that means we don't think much of the people that are riding the buses. I don't think it thinks much of it. So, uh, so I uh, I complained to George, who thinks he's the county manager, and I told George this is embarrassing. And George, I think he might almost agree with me on this one. So, um, so we would like a little bit better attitude toward bus stop benches. By the way, in this book, the the bus stops 101, it tends on page 24, it tends to demean the private sector. And uh, to their, I don't like to give Daytona too much credit for anything ever, but uh, some years ago, two years ago, let's say, three years ago, they made a deal with Creative Outdoor Advertising. And Creative Outdoor Advertising has installed 47 brand new bus stop benches and three shelters. In the last 10 years, Volusia County and Votran have been so installed in the 121 new bus stops, but overall, they've installed zero new bunch benches. So that speaks to the problem, and it's not Votran's problem, because I think they follow orders. It's not your problem, Kelvin. I think you follow orders. We got $22 million in care funding. So what did we do? We took the general fund contribution to Votran two years ago from 12 million down to 7.5 million. And this year, the general fund contribution Votran is 5 million bucks. Because according to the budget department, we are blending the 22 million in and saving ourselves a whole bunch of general fund money. Votran is getting shortchanged and it should be reported. Now, I don't know, I don't know, Tyndall Oliver, if you can say that in a report and still get hired the next time. So I understand you're on the horns of a dilemma, but we got the money, Volusia County very shortly is gonna get 107 million more dollar manna from heaven from Joe, from, uh, Joe Biden. $107 million is coming from the federal government 
can we spend a million and put in a few bus stop benches? Thank you for listening. Real quick before we move on to the next question, I did get Ms. Hall's um, question online. Uh, first of all, we opened up a public um, meeting with the TPO, specifically back in the beginning of the process um, with Tyndall Oliver um, doing a presentation. So they did do a presentation for the TPO. Um, and second of all, um, uh, the county Votran, uh, we are looking at how we can improve bus stops. I'm, I can assure you that that is a top priority to us and we are looking at how we can make that happen. Working with the cities, um, working with the funds that we have, we're, um, we're trying to move that process forward. So just wanna reassure everybody in the public. I'm going to let um, Ms. Hall get her question answered. So she's um, wanting to know why the bus line um, does not go to the Father Lopez and Champion Elementary on LPGA. Can anybody from Botran answer that question for me? <laughs> Would it be fair to say that it's um, ridership? Yes, historically we've not had the demand to go. Right. So Ms. Hall, if you can still hear us, um, typically the, the answer um, is as simple as saying that, you know, we just haven't had the ridership um, for that area uh, to take a line out that, um, that way. Um, but feel free to contact Votran to discuss it further. Um, you know, we'd, we'd love to give you some more information on how that works. I think there's another question from her as well. Okay, so, um, why doesn't the planning board mandate bus service to any large retail residential area before granting development of a project? Examples include the delay of Tanger and Tomoka Town Center and the new Minto development. Um, there's a little bit more here. Minto developments in the future Avalon. That's a good question. <laughs> okay, if anybody can maybe take a stab at that answer on the microphone. <laughs> well, you want us to speak for the planning board? Well, no, maybe just give her some guidance. All right, this one works. All right, uh, Ms. Hall, the, uh, that really is a really good question for the municipalities and the planning boards of the municipalities. Um, you know, we do get uh, notifications um, of individual developments, but for systems as large as Mosaic, Mentos, Avalon, um, you really need to direct that question to the um, city planning boards. I would, I would also say in response to her LPGA question, uh, if she fills out the survey monkey that Tyndall Oliver has for their TDP and in the comments, uh, put that in now. I'm sure we will study that as part of the TDP. Okay, anybody else online have any other questions, including Ms. Hall, feel free to ask. Raise your hand or type it in. Okay, so it doesn't look like we have anybody else online that's gonna ask any more questions, but of course we'll kind of keep it open while we finish out the rest of the, the evening, um, which is um, there'll be staff that can show you what each of these boards mean with more detail, um, answer questions for you. Um, feel free to walk around the room and engage um, with Votran staff. Uh, and if you have any other questions, let me know. We'll keep it open until uh, everybody's had their time. Thank you.
Thank you. 